Hello guys. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you think carbohydrates are the only energy giving foods? I'm here to answer that question. And the answer is automatically a no. Now, we all were taught in our primary schools or in our lower classes that we have three macronutrients that give us uh, different functions in the body. Number one is carbohydrates, which is basically, uh, which we were taught that uh, it's an energy giving food. We believed that up to now, and it's hard to change that. Number two, we were conditioned to know that proteins are bodybuilding foods. And then number three, we were told uh, that uh, fats, but I don't think most of you were taught about fats. Most of you were just told fats will make you big and and give you obesity, so fat is dangerous, cholesterol is dangerous. But there is a micronutrient that is called vitamins that we were told boosts your immunity. I don't disagree. However, I don't believe that carbohydrates are the only energy-giving foods. All the three macronutrients, lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins, can be broken down to give you energy in form of ATP. And that's why, and actually, Fats, which are lipids or triglycerides, have double the calories that the two, the other two can give you, the protein and the carbohydrates. That tells you fat are supposed to be classified as the energy-giving foods. So, all the three macronutrients, that is protein, that is fat or lipids and carbohydrates, are broken down or metabolized to give you one common compound that is called acetyl-CoA. Now, acetyl-CoA is a compound that the body cells or the mitochondria, because the mitochondria is the energy machinery of the cell. So this acetyl-CoA is fed into the mitochondria and it undergoes a cycle of events. And that cycle is what is called the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Those who have learned uh, biochemistry understand that there is a cycle in the mitochondria that uh, takes acetyl-CoA through different mechanisms or through different uh, channels to yield energy, which is ATP. And that cycle is called the Krebs cycle. And this Krebs cycle, its best, its baseline is just uh, to break down this acetyl-CoA and end down to something called NADH. That NADH is the one that is now uh, oxidatively, uh, uh, it's oxidized, sorry, through a process that is called oxidative phosphorylation to give you ATP. So even glucose, once you take glucose, it has to go into the mitochondria, then it is broken down to, acid, uh, to, uh, to pyruvate, then to acetyl-CoA, then this acetyl-CoA yields NADH, then that NADH gives you ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. Now from what I've just explained, I know it's complicated, but you can already start to understand that at the energy factory of the cell, which is the mitochondria, the cell does not recognize carbohydrates, protein, or lipids anymore. What the cell knows is acetyl-CoA, and regardless of the source, it will break it down to give you ATP. Up to that, you already start to question if at all carbohydrates are the energy-giving foods. Now on that note, just like your food store, when you have a food store and you store their food, and then you buy new foodstuffs, you will prefer the first foods that were in that store be utilized before you, uh, you you store new food. So just a simple basic rule for first in and first out. So the energy that you're getting as ATP is not coming from the food that you're eating or the glucose that you're leaking. It is coming from the energy reserves, the storage, which is the liver, the glycogen, which is broken down to glucose, gives you pyruvate and then goes into the Krebs cycle and also the free fatty acids, so basically the triglycerides that are stored in the cells, the fat cells, will also be broken down through ketogenesis or ketosis to give you acetyl-CoA, which is again fed into the uh, Krebs cycle. So, at that level you realize it is useless to believe that carbohydrates are the energy-giving foods. Because also remember, protein can still give you the glucose that you want and also give you the ATP that you need. So when proteins are broken down to give you glucose, that is what we call gluconeogenesis. So we are sourcing glucose from neo, new, 
compounds which are not carbohydrates or other compounds which are not carbohydrates and that's basically protein. Also, we can source that energy from fat through a process called ketogenesis or ketosis to give you ketones, also to give you acetyl-CoA, which again is fed into the uh, uh, tricarboxylic acid cycle or the Krebs cycle to give you ATP. Now, something interesting about the mitochondria. At that level, we are now synthesizing, synthesizing energy to help you survive and to help your cells and your brain cells to function adequately or optimally. Now, the mitochondria has different functions. One of it being uh, uh, this processing of energy. Another one is basically it does self-cleansing. And this self-cleansing will only happen when you're doing a process, uh, when you're fasting and when you get into autophagy, which gets, which starts from 18 hours and above. So when you fast for 18 hours, you go through a process called autophagy and therefore cellular organelles or the cell starts to clean up. So the mitochondria starts to clean up during autophagy. So that is the only way you can detoxify or you can clean up your mitochondria to help you avoid diseases. And some diseases are associated with the function or dysfunction of the mitochondria. One of them being Alzheimer's, the loss of memory. Other ones being brain fun uh, problems. Other ones being loss of memory. Depression, anxiety, attention deficit, hyperactive disorder. The ADHD in your child is because of a defect in mitochondria. Also, most cancers hail from a mutation in the mechanisms of energy production, which is in the mitochondria. And that tells you this organelle is very important and has to be protected by all means through autophagy and fasting. Now, you can go ahead and take all those uh, drugs for these conditions, like antidepressants for depression, like diabetic drugs for uh, diabetes, like uh, drugs for hypertension, drugs for kidney problems and drugs for cancer. But these drugs will not solve the problem in the mitochondria. You can as well go ahead and take those concoctions that you take, the lemon, the ginger, and whatever. You can as well go ahead and do every other form of detox that is sold to you by people who are in marketing. But they will not solve the problem. They are actually telling you they are cleaning your blood and they are cleaning your cells, but they are not telling you what exactly is happening. So what is happening is if you, the only way to clean your mitochondria and the only way to rejuvenate from these conditions, cancer, Alzheimer's, loss of memory, mental disorders like depression and anxiety, uh, diabetes, obesity, hypertension. If you want to recover from this, then you have to clean up your mitochondria. No drugs can do that for you. You will only do this through fasting and autophagy. Okay? So at the mitochondrial level, that is where everything happens. That is where mutations start and that's where cancer begins. So if you have never read about the mitochondria, please take time to read about it and understand it. So, in this video, what I'm telling you is that carbohydrates are not the only energy-giving uh, macromolecules. And as we talked about them before, we said that carbohydrates are the only food uh, substances that will give you a disease condition when you consume them. But they will never give you a deficiency condition if you don't consume them. So, all other macronutrients can give you a deficiency condition if you don't eat them. But carbohydrates can't. But if you consume carbohydrates in plenty, then you'll end up in diabetes, hypertension, cancer, and all these um, conditions that uh, come as a result of consumption of carbohydrates. Therefore, you can source energy from protein, which is healthy energy, and that is uh, gluconeogenesis. You can source energy from fat, which is also healthy energy, that is called uh, ketosis or ketogenesis. And therefore, the food that you eat now has to be digested, has to be absorbed, then has to be stored before it now becomes be, uh, begins to be turned into acetyl-CoA to give you active energy. So therefore, do not lie to yourself that when you eat, you have instant energy. On that note, when we leak that uh, commercial product that you call glucose, you think you're going to get instant energy. That is a lie. First of all, read on that uh, the, the label. That product does not have any glucose in it. It has something else. It is not glucose. Number two, if you take it now, what it does is it activates your test buds. It also activates your brain to release dopamine. So you'll get a dopamine hit and you'll feel good about yourself. So that feeling good is the, is the, is the one that convinces you that you have, got, you have new energy because there's no energy in that product. So what we are saying is fast in, fast out. 
the energy that you're getting to utilize has to come from the storage form of glucose which is glycogen in the liver and the muscles and the fat cells in the fat, uh, the fat in the fat cells so you have to clear this out before you bring in new energy to be stored new glucose to be stored so never ever be lied to that if you eat you'll get instant energy after three hours no that will be digestion that will be absorption and that will be headed to storage before the body starts to utilize it so the body will always take what is in store for it to create more room for new storage okay so and learn that you can get energy from all other macronutrients protein and uh, fat and avoid carbohydrates processed foods are dangerous to you avoid them so that is the basic of this video so the Krebs cycle is basically a biochemical uh, channel that explains to us that all these food molecules that we take will at the end of the day give you ATP but additionally proteins can give you trace elements proteins can give you uh, healthy amino acids so they have alternative things that they do apart from just giving you energy fat will give you triglycerides fat will give you cholesterol that will be used to uh, form your nerve cells form your cell membranes give you uh, those hormones like testosterone and uh, estrogen and, and make your skin look good give you vitamin D so those are other advantages of utilizing fat However, carbohydrates, they will only be broken down to glucose to give you ATP. And excess of that will give you problems like diabetes. So if you can, stay away from uh, carbohydrates because they are not, they do not have any nutritional value. But if you can't, then minimize on simple carbohydrates and concentrate on complex carbohydrates. You can do without carbohydrates.